Hey, this is Sky. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So have you ever believed in having a soulmate? Some people truly believe that they're with their soulmate. Let me tell you something. I don't believe, personally, I don't believe in the concept of a soulmate. I don't think there is such a thing. I don't think we get a soulmate. I think that belief is really just an immature belief held by little girls and weak men. Now, I used to think that soulmates existed, but that was when I was a weak person. I'll tell you about one of the first women that I fell in love with. I had had several girlfriends through high school, but then finally when I was, I guess, 17 or 18, I was probably 17, right before I graduated, I met this girl named Noelle, and she was kind of in the group of friends that I had, and me and her ended up going out on a date, and then we became boyfriend and girlfriend soon afterwards. I'll never forget, you know, because hindsight is 2020. But I'll never forget when my friends had asked me after our first date what I thought of her. And they were very excited that I was going to date her because I had been dating girls that were kind of outside the group of friends and then bringing them in. And I guess it was exciting that for them that I was going to date this chick for some reason. So they were asking me, how was it? How was it? You know, what was she like? We didn't have sex or anything, so don't get dirty mind yet. Uh, they just wanted to know what the date was like. And we went down to Georgetown. I was living in D.C. We went down to Georgetown. We had a fine time. And I came back and I talked about her and I told my friends, my buddies, eh, she's weird. I'm not really vibing on her. We'll see. Well, all of that changed after we had sex for our first time. And it's not that she was so amazing and it was so buck wild, like it was some video off of, you know, Pornhub. We were 17. I was fairly unexperienced at that age. And uh, I was a late bloomer. And it just was what it was, right? But I fell in love with her. That pussy made me fall in love with her. I, I just went nuts for her. <laughs> Literally and figuratively. Well, we ended up dating rather seriously and falling in love, or at least what we thought was love. Just because you say, I love you to somebody, doesn't really mean that you mean it. And it doesn't really mean that you even know what love is. It gets to be this word we say when we feel like we get to a certain amount of attachment and, uh, to somebody. Love exists and it's real, but you have to understand what it is. So we ended up getting married. I asked her to marry me when we were 18. And she said yes. And I gave her a stolen diamond ring that I stole. And I was a, not a professional thief, but I was into robberies. Heavily, heavily, heavily into robberies. We used to hit the gem and jewelry show every year when it would come to town. And I had a friend whose father could get us tickets into the wholesale room. And in the wholesale room at the gem and jewelry show, it's tables of stuff that buyers from uh, jewelry stores and stuff that they can go and buy from. So you get expensive jewelry just laid out. We would go through there and clean up. Never got popped or nothing for it. We would come out of there with thousands of dollars worth of diamond rings, gold rings, pockets full of this shit. Go to the pawn shop. Sell them for nothing. Pawn shops rape you. But if it's stolen goods, back in those days you could do that. Now it's you got to fill all this paperwork. Back in those days you just go up to the pawn shop. These guys make a deal with you. You walk out with cash. We were doing this as kids. <laughs> so I gave her one of these rings and she was happy for it. And she uh, said yes. And uh, her mother was so shocked that a 18 year old kid gave her such a big diamond ring. <laughs> Almost forced her to give it back to me. We ended up moving in together uh, right away and moved out to California and wanted to start our lives. Now, I was dead set on her being the one. And I had these fantasies of us living this life together. And we, we hooked up it as kids. We never really got to know each other. I can honestly say we never really knew each other because we weren't very mature people. Our conversations were pretty shallow. Long story short with her is we ended up, we ended up breaking up, which was all for the best, but it devastated me. 
it, it, it devastated me because I held onto this fantasy in my head of her being my soulmate. She was the one. Like as if she was made for me in heaven and God sent her to me or some kind of shit, right? And then I finally did it and I was so happy. But it was really just the sex and not being lonely. It, it can really suck being lonely. And even if you are, say you're getting laid or you have a girlfriend, doesn't mean you can't experience loneliness. Because I wasn't in a real relationship with any. I was young. I was in high school. But I wasn't having real relationships. So then finally I met somebody that I could connect with on a slightly deeper level. Even if it wasn't as deep as now. I, I, now that I'm 49, I can connect with somebody on a real spiritual deep level. Because I'm a lot more intellectual. I know a lot more. I have a lot more to me. You know, and somebody you know, would also have that to bring to the table. When your kids... You just don't have it. What you think is a deep connection, what you think is pure love, is usually puppy love. It's usually based on, uh, on bullshit, on, on very shallow stuff like sex or just simply having a good time together. There's more to it than that, I've learned. But I, I was so fucked up in my early 20s over that breakup. I mean, it was like a Mack truck. And I looked back on that for years. I went on to dating other women. But I looked back on that one relationship as the one that I really blew. That was the one. That was the soulmate. And I had my soulmate. Some people uh, go their whole lives with this fantasy. I had it. And I blew it. I fucked it up. Oh, man. That just, just that alone really, really tortured me. It was a self-torture. Obviously, looking back on it now, my early 20s as an adult, you know, because when you're in your early 20s, I know you think you're a man, you think you're a grown up, you're not. I was more mature than most of my friends because I had lived a hard life, and living a hard life will mature you faster than you want to. I was still looking back on myself, I still realize, oh gosh, I was just a kid. I wasn't thinking right. But I tortured myself for that. And thought that, well, this, you know, you get one soulmate. That's the theory, right? That's the conspiracy theory. You get one soulmate. Everybody has this one. And when you meet her, you better not fuck it up. <laughs> it's all just a fantasy. A real relationship is built like a foundation of a house. And you have to start with... A connection. You start with some things in common. You start with, you know, some basics. The rest you have to build on top of, and it really takes a lot of work. Real relationships are not easy. There's this fantasy with the soulmate fantasy. That's the whole point of it. That's the whole thing is when you get a soulmate, you don't have to do nothing anymore. You don't have to think anymore. You don't have to bring anything to the table anymore. You can just be your loser ass self and the other person's going to love the fuck out of you because you're made for each other in heaven like Adam and Eve or some bullshit. It's not true. It doesn't work. Your parents argue. Your parents may have been together for a long time. My grandparents were together for 50 years until my, or longer until my grandmother died. 60 years, whatever it was. My grandmother died a few years back. They had a great relationship, but of course they argued. They had problems with each other. There was parts of my grandfather that my grandmother just were disgusted by. Why the hell are you like that? Oh, God damn you. <laughs> but they, they still were able to work together towards a common goal. And that was the relationship. And it builds over years. So you have to understand what a real relationship is in order to realize how silly that the soulmate fantasy really is. Because the soulmate fantasy, the soulmate conspiracy, this idea of a soulmate is all based on little kid dreamy romanticism, like as if it's out of a, 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 some stupid movie or a romance novel. It's, it's stuff that doesn't exist for anybody out there. You wonder why very few people have their soulmate because it doesn't exist. And if you think you find her, her shit's going to stink just like yours does. She's going to have problems that you don't know about. People are on their best behavior. 
And then when they get a year or so into their relationship, all of a sudden the real stuff starts coming out and you got to be ready to deal with it. You take the good with the bad. Everybody knows this. So I wanted to dispel this myth because I think the soulmate fantasy holds a lot of people back, especially men. I, I can't speak for women, but I can speak for guys. And I really think that it holds guys back. It keeps you in an immature childlike state as you go into a relationship and you don't want that because that's a recipe for disaster. You want to be able to mature uh, in relationships. It's so important as you go further with life. Relationships are, are, are a huge part of our life, whether it's just your buddies or in business or wherever. But with women, with the opposite sex, when it comes to love relationships, it's so essential for you to evolve in that area of your life. If you stay childlike, if you stay immature, if you hold on to these fantasies of, of when you were a kid, you're going to have a hard time. People aren't going to just accept you for your loser-ass self. And that's what this soulmate fantasy is kind of based on. It's not written in the definition, obviously, but that's what that's kind of based on. Somebody who just purely, truly accepts you for who you are. Nobody is going to do that. You have to rise to the table. Men, you have to rise to the, you know, to the occasion. You have to be playing on your A game. That's if you want to stay in a relationship for any extended period of time. You have to put in a lot of work. There's a lot that is on your shoulders. No one's going to just accept you for being a disgusting, fat, or out of shape uh, loser who drinks too much and is angry and has all these problems. you got some short little limp dick that you can't even bring the girl to an orgasm. What good are you? You think that you meet your soulmate, she's going to accept that? Nobody accepts that. <laughs> so you have to be the best you can be in order to be the role model for your family, in order to be the rock for your family, in order to be able to be a protector, a provider, a lover, and all the various things that come along with manhood when it comes to being in a relationship. And the soulmate fantasy goes against all of this. The soulmate fantasy is something for the weak. It keeps you in this perpetual mode of chasing. It will, a soulmate fantasy will ruin a relationship that you're in right now. I've done this. I have been with perfectly wonderful women, women that I dumped because I didn't think they were the soulmate going on this fantasy that I had before as a child that we each get a soulmate. And I had mine. And then I compared every woman after that to this incredibly flawed person that I thought was my soulmate. And broke up with women that I could have put more time into. But I walked away from, no, I'm not harshing on regrets. I don't look at life that way. You learn and move forward. You don't sit there and stay stuck in the past, wondering well, what happened, uh, looking at a broken glass. No, you pick the glass up. You clean up. And you go get another one. And you make sure you don't break that other one. So it's just good to know these things in order to be able to move forward. And I realized this with myself, that, what may start off in a weird way sometimes, what may be somebody that ha you have to put work towards in order to love, is still a perfectly fine relationship to be in. You don't have to be like holding hands, running through fields, and like they show on TV and these ridiculous romances. It's not going to always be like that. Real men who have evolved with relationships, know this. They're watching this video like, yeah, you're preaching to the choir, of course. But, you know, if, if one person out there, I don't know who this video is for, but if one person out there gets this, man, you, you can save yourself a lot of time uh, from being in a lot of delusional struggle, which I went through. I went through years of hardships in relationships, stuck on this soulmate fantasy, this bullshit. And I could have made some, something more of the, the relationships that I had and put more effort into it or have been looking for, hunting for, targeting through my scope a more realistic idea of what a relationship is and what women are supposed to be in a man's life.
instead of going with a fantasy. So it's all just food for thought. I hope I got at least somebody thinking on this. Thanks for watching.